Hi, my name is Louise Phillips. I'm a psychological crime thriller writer. I'm based in Ireland and I live in the Dublin Mountains and I'm making this very short film as part of Periscope, which is a global author initiative showing where readers where authors write. So if you'd like to hold on for a few seconds, I'll bring you along the way. So unlike I suppose a lot of authors, I don't have a specific office or designated area and that's possibly because I tend to um, to change my position in the house where I write depending on which point of view so sometimes I sit here at the dining room table sometimes I'm over on one of the chairs over there sometimes I'm over at the desk in the corner so this is one of the places that I'm in quite a lot mainly because there's quite a lot of light comes in as you can see from outside and that's really important because I tend to write my first drafts in the winter months and the more light you can get the better. Uh, I've pulled out a couple of storyboards here. This is a storyboard I put together for the doll's house because the main protagonist regresses through hypnosis into childhood. So it was important for me to have images of toys and other items of that particular time scale which would have been around the 60s and 70s. Uh, I often do a storyboard for characters and this storyboard was about a character again in the doll's house who was uh, down and out on the streets in Dublin. So I just find the visual inspiration great. And this again is another one that's attached to the doll's house. And I suppose the idea behind the top picture here is that, you know, there's two sides to a personality, the private persona and also then the public persona. So who you see isn't always who they actually are. Um, and another thing, I'm very lucky because I work with Achette Ireland, is that they give me great input on the covers. So this was the first mood board I ever did, which was for um, Red Ribbons, my first novel. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of red. Uh, there's a young girl. We're out in the woods, in the mountains. And although the final cover isn't by any means an exact replica, you can see how the mood definitely influenced the design. So... I'm just going to bring you along here and um, we'll get back to my laptop now in a second. Uh, for anyone who's never seen a print out of a full manuscript, this is sort of what it looks like. Lots of thickness and lots of amendments. So um, let me see. So I'll start off here, uh, which might seem like a very unusual place to start a big red ribbon. But this was actually the mood board, or not the mood board. This was actually one of the things that I used for the launch of Red Ribbons, which was my first novel and um, the red ribbon signified a part of the story of the book. So I suppose it was a little bit special, the fact it was my first book and my first book launch, and so I, I kept the ribbon. Um, so around here comes to bookshelves. We live in a house that's full of bookshelves. Um, we have a bookshelf here. We have a bookshelf over there. We've got about three books shelves upstairs sets of bookshelves upstairs and then in the kitchen which is part of the old part of our house um, which is over 200 years old we have a complete wall of books and I'd love to bring it in there but unfortunately because of the thickness of the walls we'd lose the internet signal and that wouldn't be a good thing so one of the reasons why I like being surrounded by books apart from the fact that I enjoy to read them is that I often underline special lines in books and um, when I'm feeling like in need of inspiration I will take a book down from the shelf, I will flick through pages and I will have marked various items that I thought were good pieces of prose and it's not that I would be copying any writer's prose directly but I just think that it always helps when you um, when you, when you read good prose and you're trying to write good prose. And yes, as somebody has asked, is that an Irish Book Award up there? It is indeed an Irish Book Award. Um, I got the I won the best Irish crime novel of the year for my second novel, The Doll's House. So that's a really cherished within our household. And um, and the other two books were shortlisted as well in both 2012 and 2014. So. Hopefully I am doing something right. One of the reasons why I'm going to show you this fire is that I'll just step back a bit because one of the places I write is on this chair, which is laptop on lap. And so generally when I sit and write, especially in the winter months, this is what I see and my foot and also the views outside. So the fire is a big part for me. Fire 
candles, flames have always been important. I just think it's the whole ever-changing aspect of them. So we'll just walk around the room and I'll bring you to the other part of the of the sitting room where I write as well. So there's this little desk here in the corner. Um, so where do we start? So yeah, every writer talks about notebooks. Um, I have a pile of notebooks as you can see here and here and here. This is one of my fave ones. It's from a, a good while ago. And it says, I used to be Snow White, but I drifted. And I suppose that for me sums up quite a lot, apart from the humorous aspect of it. It's also the fact that I started to write late in life after our children had grown up. And I do believe that everybody can redefine themselves. And for me, certainly writing has redefined me as a person. So just to go through these little notebooks here, this probably show off my terrible handwriting. Um, I like the notebooks because even though they never really transcribed exactly as the words would be within the notebooks, they're my first intro into the story. And so there's something very special about that for me. Um, on my desk here, uh, I have this little stone. It says Mary keep, kept pondering all the things in her heart. And it's Yes, there is a religious, I suppose, context to it. But for me, it was something that I got when I was a teenager. And when I write, that's what I try to do. I try to write about the things that are in my heart that are important for me. One of the questions that I often ask when I'm starting a story is, so what? what? Why write this story? Um, and it really is important to me that the motivation is strong. This notebook here will be the notebook I will use for my next novel, which is number five, which at the moment is completely blank. So that's kind of scary, but one day it'll be full of words. And then I have these larger notebooks here as well, which as you can see are also a glorified um, mess at times, but they're, they're what I use. This little thing here is um, from the launch of Last Kiss, the my third novel, which had a female killer in it. And I suppose with book launches, it's nice to have a little bit of um, humour. And the lipstick symbolises the shade of the lipstick that the killer uses in the story. I also have a couple of books here. They're quite older about the life of Robert Emmett. Because, um, as I mentioned earlier on, this is the old part of the house. There is uh, a lot of history associated with the Robert Emmett um, uprising. So it's important to keep a little bit of old here. And also in this area, we tend to have lots of paintings, which is about mountain roads. And I, I walk quite a lot when I'm writing. I always bring my phone with me to make notes. And so that's, that is a big part of it too. So um, this is grandchildren area. It's not usually this tidy, especially when they're not here. But um, I do kind of have a great feeling with the fact that I, I write where we live, where activities happen. And even though... I can't write if there's other people in the room during the day when I'm on my own. I know that this is part of my life and my heart. So, um, so down here, the current book that I'm, that I'm just finished is called The Game Changer. And it's a lot about sort of mind manipulation. And one of these interesting questions was how narcissistic am I? Um, and I've also used this social psychology book as I would use other psychology books because they're psychological crime thrillers. Um, it's important to have a strong background in what you're writing about. And then moving around here, we have more, I suppose, views of the mountain area. And there's lots of photographs of our children as you go along this way. And up here is, um, I'll try and get this so that the sun isn't in the way. But basically, this last kiss, which is my third novel, was based on a short story. And it won the Jonathan Swift Award. And this is what I got framed at the time. And it was also partly the inspiration for the cover of Last Kiss, which I'll just show you on the postcards here. Sorry for drifting around. But there's the postcard there. And as you can see, there are definite similarities. Um, so going around here to the other bookshelf, I... Uh, again, lots and lots of books. And up here you can see Penguin classic crime novels. And um, one of them actually features in The Game Changer, which is the current novel which will be out 
in September. So I'm going to bring you around. Um, our dog is being very lazy, but he often comes in and keeps me company when human beings are long away. So say hello, Benson, your introduction to stardom. He doesn't look very excited, but that's okay. And um, I'm going to bring you around here and I'm going to read a very short piece from my current novel, which is called, as I said, The Game Changer. And I'll just twist this around here and hopefully this will work. Technology. And now Benson has come in. So this, the opening of the story starts in 1988 Dublin. So, um, and anyone who's familiar with a series of books for Audrey Benson will will know of the principal character, Kate Pearson, who's a criminal psychologist. So this, this, little, this piece is about her father. So I'll just start to read. The smog had been heavy for days, Dublin city falling into darkness by late afternoon. The poison billowing from the chimneys attacked the throat and lungs as it crept menacingly through doors and windows. Some of those who ventured outside wore masks in an effort to stop the sickening blackness, while politicians argued in government buildings about speeding up the transfer to smokeless fuels, and another black Dublin winter took its toll. The mood on the streets was sombre, the air choking, as if the city was partially buried. It was after midnight when Valentine Pearson strode past the town hall clock in the suburb of our mines, then turned around and went back in the opposite direction. The repeated solitary movement up and down the footpath fought off the night chill and the edge to his mood. He wore a long grey overcoat with a black silk scarf wrapped around his nose and mouth, his collar raised, his back trilby tilted downwards, keeping his eyes in the shadow. He listened as the clock chimed a quarter to midnight. So that's a very short piece and here's Benson here to say, oh no, he's going shy, to say goodbye. And I hope you enjoyed the film. And um, just actually, just to finish off, I'll just show you, um, if you can see out here, let's see, open this door. That little tiny uh, attic window up there is where I have another writing area, which unfortunately, as I said, um, we would lose the disconnection if we went inside. So I suppose I'll just leave you with, oh, I often sit out here and write as well. So that's good too. And this is where we live. So I hope you enjoyed the video and um, thank you for listening.